Hi, I'm Tim. I'm one of the coaches of the Saskatoon Power U14 ringette team. This last weekend we had a chance to meet the players on our team. We found out that we had a wide range of experience. Uh, we had girls that have been playing ringette for many years and we had girls that had only one or two years of experience and we also have girls that are new to the sport of ringette. So when I got thinking about all the information that uh, girls are going to need to know for practices and for playing the sport of ring at this season, uh, I just realized how overwhelming it must be for uh, especially some of the girls that are going to be just starting out. So I thought I would try and make a video here that it explains just some of the basic information that we're going to be covering in practice that they're going to need to know. I thought if I did it in video form, they could hopefully review it uh, as many times as they needed to until they understood it. So here we go. I'm going to just start with the uh, ice surface. So basically, we're going to start here at the two ends. There's two small red lines that are called the goal lines. They line up directly with the front of the net. Moving forward, there's a, a couple more small red lines that are at the top of the free play circles. These two lines here are referred to as the free play lines and uh, some information you'll need to know about that is when we are playing at regular strength, meaning that uh, there's no penalties, uh, you're only allowed, each team is only allowed three players inside of that line. So basically if this was our end, uh, we would be allowed three players from the red line, the free play line back in order uh, to help defend our net. And the opposition end would be allowed three players from the red line, uh, free play line in to try and score on us. So moving forward to the blue lines, so the next lines, uh, some important information that uh, the girls, uh, especially new to the sport, are going to need to know about this is that uh, although there are no offsides in ring yet, uh, you are not allowed to carry the ring across a blue line. So if you're in any of the zones, uh, in either the end zones or in the neutral zone, which is in the middle of the ice between the two blue lines. Uh, if you want to proceed into one of the other zones, you have to either pass the ring to somebody in that other zone or at least shoot it into that other zone. Uh, once you do shoot it or pass it over a blue line, you cannot uh, go and take control of the ring again until another player, either a player on your team or a player on the opposing team has touched it. So typically, you know, if you have control of the ring in one of the zones, you're going to be trying to uh, advance it over the blue line and try and get it to one of your team's players so that you can maintain possession of the ring. Uh, the next line here is the center line, also referred to as the red line, so that can be somewhat confusing. Uh, sometimes the coaches may refer to it as the center line and other times they may refer to it as the red line, which... Uh, if you hear either of those terms, that's what we're referring to. The next uh, things I'm going to talk about here are the five uh, free play circles. So basically there's five free play circles and whenever there's a stoppage of play, uh, well typically when there's a stoppage of play, it will start again either from one of the five free play circles or it could be a, a, a goalie ring in which in that case they would start to play with the, the goalie. Uh, throwing the ring out to one of their, uh, trying to get to one of their players. So when it comes to the free play circles, uh, basically they're cut in half. So depending on which team is, gets the free, free play pass, uh, you will start in, in your side of the ring. So if, if this is our net and we have a free pass and any of the circles would be on the half of the circle that's closest to, uh, to our net. So uh, next thing I want to talk about is the different zones. Uh, there's an offensive zone, a defensive zone, and a neutral zone. So uh, the offensive zone and defensive zone are actually referred to in reference to your net. So it can be a little bit confusing again. So it's from the blue line in. So this could be the offensive zone or the defensive zone depending on uh, what we're describing. Uh, the area between the two blue lines is the neutral zone all the time. So uh, just uh, for ease of the discussion at practices and stuff, we're going to always be referring to the offensive zone and defensive zone in, in uh, reference to our net. So if this is our net and we're talking about the defensive zone, we'll always be talking about the area from the blue line in. 
Uh, that would be our defensive zone. And the reason we call it the defensive zone is because when we're in that area and the other team has possession of the ring, we're going to be trying to defend against them and prevent them from scoring. When we talk about the offensive zone in practice, we'll be talking about the zone from the blue line uh, in on the opposition net. And again, we call that the offensive zone because when we have control of the ring in that area, we'll be on offense and we'll be trying to score on their net. So uh, again, back to the neutral zone, it's between the two blue lines and once again, <coughs> it doesn't matter, uh, it does not change. Or when you change from one net to the other, it's always a neutral zone. So if we're referring to the neutral zone, we're referring to the area of the ice between the two blue lines. Uh, one other area that I'd like to discuss quickly is the slot. You'll hear us refer to the slot a lot. Uh, it's an area directly in front of the net. If you were to basically draw a line, uh, just a little bit wider than the net on each side, and, and out probably close to the free play line, this whole general area in here is called the slot. It's an area where most of the goals are scored from. And the reason most of the goals are scored from there is because the shooter has the best angle uh, at the net, uh, meaning that they will end up with more net to shoot at. It's harder for the goalie to protect uh, when the angles or the shots are coming from directly out in the slot. So during our practice throughout the year, you're going to hear us referring to the slot. We're going to be talking about trying to get into the slot area to get a shot. And we want you to get into that area as much as possible with your shots because that's the highest percentage of goal scoring shots from that area. And also, in our end, we're going to be talking about uh, trying to prevent the other team from getting into that area to, to get a shot when we're defending. So we'll be practicing defense and when we're practicing defense, we're going to be trying to keep the opposing team uh, you know, out of the slot or if they're in the slot we're going to be trying to push them out farther away from the net so the goalie has more time to stop the shot or we're going to be trying to push them out towards the boards away from the slot so the angle uh, of the shot that they're trying to take is uh, not as good an angle to score on. So I think I'm going to just stop right there and if you have any questions you can send me an email or you can ask me at practice. Thank you.